What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 298 of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, and this is the Hot Tags edition of the week, where I'll be breaking down some current events, rumors, gossip, news, bullshit, scuttlebutt, when whatever the hell else we want to talk about that went down the past couple of days in the world of professional wrestling. And originally, I had said to myself, oh, damn, this is a pretty slow news week. What the hell am I going to talk about? That was earlier today. <laughs> and then we got hit with two big, big uh, stories and a couple little things that go along with it. So let's just kind of wrap up a couple things in uh, together as WWE Network News. One thing is that we have yet another budgetary cut. The NXT Insider Show has been canceled, which is not too surprising to me because, honestly, I don't really know who would have really been checking that out. That's kind of like a recap and fill you in on what's happening on NXT if you don't watch NXT. And really, if you don't watch NXT, you're not going to care about filling yourself in. And if you do watch NXT, you're not going to need to know what you missed. You know what I mean? It's really an odd thing that they would even necessarily try. So that does not shock me whatsoever. Uh, But we have two somewhat positive things for the network. One of them is that the WWE Network is going to be coming to China. They'll be able to stream the service, so that's really good. Obviously, that's a little bit more revenue, a little bit more uh, subscribers that boosts that rate up a little bit, gets them some more money that they can kind of play around with. Maybe we get Pyro back. I don't know. But then it was this weird thing where they instituted this Flashback Friday, which is this new kind of series, and it's not a series kind of. Uh, this drove me fucking nuts at first because they were marketing it, at least in, from what, how I was uh, interpreting it, as a new weekly marathon series that would kind of take a theme and it would sort of like, they would talk about it and show you clips and stuff. Well, it seems like it's just the same thing as the WWE Collections thing, where it's not actually new content in any uh, regard. It's just, let's take a theme And we'll have some intern pick a bunch of clips and then we'll put them together as like, well, for this one, the premiere was the 20 years of Degeneration X. And then it was like, well, here's a clip of like them forming and here's a clip of whatever. It actually wasn't even popping up for me when I was doing searches and stuff because I thought it was an actual show. And if you did a search for 20 years of Degeneration X, it wasn't popping up for me either. And it really just kind of annoyed the hell out of me. So this is the type of thing that I think, what's really going to be the use for it? You're paying somebody, an intern or an actual employee or whatever, to go through and pick out what they want to have as part of this collection. And that's kind of one of those things that, like, the people that are really into the network and they really want to invest in the time and watch old clips can just, you know, go into the search and figure it out for themselves. It's sort of weird. So it's not, like, so superfluous that I think that it's going to hurt them, but Honestly, I'm never going to check it out. I don't think I'm ever going to be sitting there going, oh man, this week, uh, Flashback Friday is going to be like the best of Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Well, that's so much more different than the WWE collections of the best of Jim Duggan. Where, you know what I mean? Like, it's just an odd thing. I don't really like it all that much. So, bad uh, <laughs> when it comes to that, kind of. And originally, I was thinking that I was going to have at least one of the hot tags was going to be my thoughts on a table for three that they had advertised, which was Ric Flair, Sting, and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Well, they replaced it, kind of at the last minute, with Ric Flair Forever the Man. And that, I watched the whole thing, figuring maybe it would be something different. All it was was Ric Flair's last match against Shawn Michaels, and then the celebration afterward on Monday Night Raw. That was it. Nothing else. No commentary or anything like that. And it's kind of ominous and a little bit weird. So that's why I watched the whole thing. And the main reason why is because our main topic for this week, at least as far as uh, today goes, which it's 12.40 a.m. on, well, technically it's Tuesday because it's in the morning now, but I'm doing this right after Monday Night Raw, essentially. Uh, The biggest story that we've got going on at the moment is Ric Flair is in dire straits, it seems. Um the reports have been kind of contradictory a little bit here and there, so we're not going to know exactly what the situation is, but from a couple different things, uh, one thing said that he was in a medically induced coma, 
and that it was for alcoholic cardiomyopathy, uh, which is essentially heart failure due to chronic alcoholism. Uh, another thing which seemed to be a little bit more on the regular like uh, channels is that he went in for surgery, possibly for colon surgery. Maybe something not related, but it's all kind of up in the air. And this all started with his manager saying that he was going in for routine monitoring and that, that there was no need to panic. And then it turned into, oh, crap, we, we need everybody to give their prayers and stuff like that, which is pretty scary because uh, when you go in for surgery, you never know if you're going to get out of it. And if you have to be in a medically induced coma for it, it's even worse. Um, my dad was in a situation where he went in for some kind of a surgery and too many health complications got in the way, medically induced coma, couldn't get out of it. You know, uh, somebody like Ric Flair, he's up there in his age. You know, we've been seeing a lot of our old favorites go down, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Dusty Rhodes, you know, like we're, we're at that age where those legends are starting to, well, they, not that they're starting, they already have, uh, ultimate warriors gone now. Um, you know, obviously the people in the past, like Mr. Perfect and stuff, had died prematurely, I guess you could say. But it's a, it's a scary kind of thing to think about. So um, that, unfortunately, is not the only thing going on in that kind of regard. JoJo missed Monday Night Raw because her sister, I believe it was, passed away recently. So that sucks. Obviously, condolences go out to JoJo and her family, and uh, thoughts go out to Ric Flair's family and everybody going along with that. Um no uh, reports yet of, of course, the, the main thing everybody's looking out for, which is some kind of report that Ric Flair's unfortunately passed away, but it is kind of a little bit eerie and freaky that they pulled that table for three and they replaced it with Ric Flair Forever the Man. I don't know if maybe this is my conspiracy angle going on, but maybe they know something. Maybe they, you know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, this isn't turning out good. Let's... Uh, let's air this and not air the table for three. Um, I don't know. You know, hopefully that's not the case though. We'll see. But that is what's co currently going on with Ric Flair. Hopefully, you know, I'm not going to post some small package or something that says that he has passed away. But let's get to the last two topics here. This is going to be a pretty short hot tags. You got a lot of content coming your way this week, everybody. I'll fill you in on that a little bit later on, but uh, the other two hot tags to talk about, one is that they've announced that SummerSlam is going to be returning to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn again next year. It'll be the fourth year in a row that they're going to be doing NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, which now at this point, NXT, uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, and then, of course, the uh, SummerSlam 2018, and then Monday Night Raw, and then Tuesday Night SmackDown, and 205 Live, and all that other kind of stuff, but four nights in a row of... Uh, WWE coming to Brooklyn for the fourth year in a row. Brooklyn must really, really, really want to keep this going, and I'm really kind of shocked. I figured it's hard for them to do multiple locations multiple times in a row, but it seems like SummerSlam is the one that they like to do that with, because didn't they do that a couple years ago with California, where it was like, I don't know, two or three years in a row, where it was in like San Diego or something, I think. Uh, but, I don't know, maybe they play around with SummerSlam, and then they try to like boost that as like hey, guys, SummerSlam is, you know, the second biggest pay-per-view of the year, and we locked ourselves in for these things, but you could get SummerSlam, that's the biggest one. It could be a negotiating tactic like that, I don't know. Very curious if there's some kind of thing where they said, like, yeah, that is purpose uh, purposeful. But it could just be a coincidence, or it could just be a matter of the people over in uh, the Barclays Center are giving them a little bit of a bid, and they're saying, like, hey, look, we really like making some fucking bomb-ass money when it comes to you, so... How about you come back again? How about we sweeten the pot a little bit? We give you a little bit less of a, you know, cut for this, or we give you a little bit more incentive for this way, or, you know, it could be one of those kind of things. A tax incentive could make a long, long thing for WWE, especially if they're in some kind of budgetary concern problem. And if they enjoy being in Brooklyn for SummerSlam, then you know what? Keep coming back. Why not? Maybe next year I'll fucking be able to go, because it seems like every year I want to go and I'm so close to being able to go, and then, like, a bunch of my friends bail and whatever. So, uh, 2018, fuckers, come on, let's do it. And our last uh, hot tag is something that 
Can't go a week without talking about these fucking people. It's Alberto Del Rio. It's always Alberto Del Rio and Paige. This time around, Paige isn't involved at the very least uh, directly, but it's an indirect kind of a thing. We know that they've been having some kind of an internal investigation of the whole situation with Del Rio and Paige in uh, Global Force Wrestling, and they've apparently come to some kind of an agreement with Alberto Del Rio, which he says was his idea. I don't know if I believe that, but I also don't know if I believe that it would have been GFW's idea, but the end result is that he's been stripped of the GFW World Heavyweight Championship. So the plans that were being built up to lead into Bound for Glory, which is their main pay-per-view of the year, have been scrapped. So the good and the bad of this. Um, the good is that they didn't let Del Rio skate by. Uh, he was in a situation that did negative kind of press for the company, and that's not good. And I agree with at least the assessment that was put out there of it's a good way to show that GFW doesn't play favorites. I agree. That's good. What is really shitty about this is this was the guy that they had hedged their bets on. This was the guy that they wanted to be their head guy in GFW. Why would you do that to somebody who has had so many issues as of recent years at this point? And, I mean, let's be honest. Del Rio is a draw to a certain extent. But is he really, like, that that big of a draw? Is he the type of guy that you need to put as your top guy in the company to spearhead the new changes going forward that'll, like, turn your company around? I highly doubt it. And it looks like they kind of have realized if he is going to turn their company around, he's just going to turn them around and slam them into the fucking mud. And you're not raising up. You're going fucking down even further. It's not a good thing to put your trust in somebody like Del Rio. I don't know the guy personally, of course, but you guys all know by now, I think that he is just problematic in way too many ways, and they should have known this years ago and not invested in them. Uh, bring him into the company, maybe. Just make sure that you don't bankrupt yourselves paying him a check and give him the grand championship. Go with that, you know what I mean? I don't think that they should have really invested all that much in Lashley either, but you know, there's an argument for some other things there. Uh, and um, result of this whole thing, though, if Del Rio stays stripped of that championship, then they're going to be having another new champion crowned at some point. Maybe that'll turn into something with Bound for Glory. Maybe they'll do like a tournament or something, and it'll be like the new champion is determined in that capacity. That could be fun for the people that like Impact. I don't watch it. So I'm not going to really follow it all that much. But it is something that's pretty interesting in the world, uh, the whole grand scope and uh, the realm of professional wrestling in general. I tend to focus only on WWE, but you guys watch other stuff too. And you know what? If you were somehow unaware of this, then hey, that's what you get your hot tags for, right? But that's it for the hot tags, at least as far as about 1 in the morning heading into Tuesday. Who knows what's coming up next? I don't know. But I do know what's coming up next as far as the YouTube channel goes. It's going to be the IWC outreach with the Ask Him and the Rest Hold content and all that other kind of stuff. And then we're going to be hitting you with the NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 predictions, followed by the SummerSlam 2017 predictions. And then at the end of the week, when we get to those two pay-per-views, Saturday night following NXT, we'll be doing our post-show. And Sunday night following SummerSlam, we'll be doing our post-show for that. And maybe something with the Mae Young uh, classic bracketology I doubt it, though. I don't think I'll do, like, a podcast based off of that. More than likely, what I'm going to be doing with Mae Young Classic is I'm not going to be doing any kind of a podcast about it afterward. I'll probably rope in my thoughts on what we've seen already into the hot tags. And then at the end, when we do the finale, then I'll do, like, a whole tournament recap or something. But maybe not. Maybe I don't know. If you guys want to see something in particular, let me know, and we'll try to get around that. But... Next week, after we do all this pay-per-view stuff, will be the mailbag. So if you have any mailbag questions you want to submit for the August edition, start doing that now so I can get a little bit of time to kind of rustle up everybody's questions and everybody's answers and, you know, get that all sorted out and stuff. But that's it for now, everybody. Thanks for listening. As always, leave your comments below. Tell me how you're doing today and tell me what you think about everything that we are talking about here. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. And when you do that, 
click off that little uh, check mark after you hit that bell icon to receive those notifications. Subscribe to us on Facebook and Twitter. Follow us there at Smartout Moment. Uh, keep checking out SmartoutMoment.com itself, of course. If you're listening to this on iTunes and Stitcher, leave a positive review. It could help out quite a bit. And uh, yeah, just pay attention to all the other stuff coming your way. So that's it uh, for this now, everybody. See you next time. This has been another Smart Out Moment, and I'm being counted out.